this is going to be a video regarding a God Roll Craft for a new linear fusion rifle in the game called Taipan, which is available via a found request for pretty much anyone. So this is going to be a look at what you should put on that weapon as a solo player. There are two different roles for this linear fusion rifle. There is the raid variant and there's a solo variant, right? This is going to focus on the solo variant, but what I also recommend if you haven't got any decent linears on like in your vault and stuff, craft two maybe one for raid because obviously king's fall just came out uh and then one for solo if you're if you're a solo player but you also occasionally raids so craft two you know if you don't raid then just craft a solo one right so it's sort of up to you but this, i'm covering the solo variant of this weapon so i'm not really really going to cover how you get it it's really straightforward you just come to this relic conduit you pick up the farm request whatever it is uh and it's straightforward you just Follow what the, the quest steps tell you. It's pretty straightforward. You equip like an auto rifle and you do this, you do that. Do a strike or whatever. Once you've done it all though, it's a really good quest. One of the best quests I've ever seen them do in a while. Because it's giving you something really useful at the end of it. We should have some sort of crafting quest every season. I like this. Because it's giving you a direct route to get something. It's such, so much more fun as opposed to like waiting for red borders to come to you. As opposed to... The game's sort of telling you, let's craft this weapon, and it's really good, I like it. But anyways, you pick up the farm request, you do it. Once you've, do, once you've done it, it'll tell you to like craft it. You'll level it up to like 16, 17, so you will need to invest a bit of time into it. I just equipped it for every activity that I've done whilst doing other stuff. And we've been a day or so. I was, I was sort of multitasking XP farm whilst doing that. Or you can do the Shirochi thing if you're impatient. But I was wanting to do a couple of things. So, it doesn't take that long to invest the time into the linear, is what I'm trying to say. So, I'll just show you what I've got on it and explain what I've got in each slot and why I picked each slot, because that's the idea of the video. So, the enhanced frame, I went for charge time. We've got fluted barrel as our choice. Enhanced battery, enhanced triple tap, enhanced frenzy. They, they are the traits. So number one, why did we choose this? Well, because I'm just experiment, experimenting with charge time, so I went that route. Because of how this linear fusion rifle works, you'd barely reload. You're not reloading that much. So I was like, well, let's not go reload. Let's go something else. I don't really need the stability so much. Um, you could go that route, I suppose. Um, so it was kind of like, I don't need the reload so much because of the weapon. So I went with the charge time instead. But as I said, if you want to go reload, I wouldn't say that that's wrong. I would say reload, charge time, one of those two options is good to you, right? Second one is the barrel I chose. I chose this because it gives me a little bit of stability and a little bit of handling speed. That is it. Barrels of preference. There isn't so much a right or wrong answer, so to speak. People have different preferences on different barrels. That's what that's there for. That's what crafting's there for, to pick what you want. So don't argue with the guy next to you just because he's chose a different barrel to you. Because we're really just talking about apples and oranges with that. It's just very minute stats, right? It's not too bad. So, yeah, I went with Fluid Barrel. That's it. Th this is where things start to be a bit more dominant in what you actually pick, right? So, the battery mod is very important. Well, well, it's quite important because it affects your magazine size. So, right. So, if I choose, like, uh, Accelerated Coils, right, I'll get one less. Right, I can do prediction fuse for more range, you know, but I'm getting less magazine size. Then there's liquid cores. Liquid cores, you get a little bit more damage, but it's it's not really even. It's like two percent, I believe it's two percent. And really, are we gonna sort of, you know, think about that? But you're getting one less shot, right? Um, so I'd rather have the extra shot, just in case the origin perk of the linear doesn't kick in, but generally it does. So, yeah, enhanced battery, I believe, I would argue it's best in slot, right? So that's what I'm going with. Enhanced triple tap, right? So you've got standard triple tap and, and enhanced triple tap. Well, the difference is between the two is that you get a little bit more time between shots, which could be handy in endgame when you might need to sort of strafe or hide behind cover for a split second to sort of peek back out and triple tap would still proc. I can see there being uses for it. Not only that, this is a very good weapon to invest your mats in. I'm sure you're full of mats, crafting mats, because people aren't crafting that many that much like that many weapons straight away. They're waiting until the best craftable weapons come and then they craft. This is a good weapon to just 
pour your resources in because you get the gold border. When you get two enhanced traits, you get the gold border. So I would just say go with an enhanced triple tap. But if you're somebody who doesn't have the mats and you're a new player, go standard triple tap. You'll be fine. We've we've been deal we've been using standard triple tap on weapons for years. So if people years ago before enhanced triple tap came out could cope, then I'm sure you could with with the standard. I'm just saying I'm gonna it's end game crafting. I wanna spend a bit of time with it and I'm gonna invest in the enhanced triple tap. So that's why I done that. Then on this one we went with enhanced frenzy. Just to, just quickly though, the other stuff in the column why I never chose it. Ensemble is useless to you in PvE. Fragile focus, we don't need that. Stab bonus type thing. Genesis is a useful perk, but not on a heavy weapon. Compulsive reloader is very useless on this weapon. Field prep is a really good perk, and you've heard me go on about field prep on how good of a weapon he is for solo and stuff. Ammo, faster reload and stuff like that. But the thing with triple tap, it's too good to, to um, pass up because it gives you more ammo out of thin air. Right, so you get a bigger. So say this uh, linear has 21 shots, that I can get to like 30 because of the triple tap. It's procking every that extra bullet. It's coming from thin air, not the not the reserves. So it's, it's triple taps is too good to pass up on a heavy. Even though I realise how good field prep is and I love it, it's one of my favourite perks. Triple taps the better option for this linear. Uh, Clown carriage is a very good perk, but again, it's only going to get you so far, isn't it? So, again, triple tap outclasses everything else in this column. So, going on to the next column, right? So, this is where this is where things depends, right? So, I said earlier, right, the, the, there's a raid variant and a standard variant. The fire and line variant is going to be best for, you, for your raid. So, if you, if you do want to craft a raid variant, then it would just be triple, enhanced triple tap and then enhance fire and line, right? You know. Or even just standard fire line, up to you. So that's what you do for that. But obviously I'm focusing on the solo perspective because you can't proc fire and line when you're on your own. So what else have we got here? Snapshot, it's PvP. Open shot, PvP. Repulsive Brace is a good perk, but again, it wouldn't suit to this weapon because you get no damage bonus from that. It's just over shields. That's better on like other types of weapons, not on this particular uh, weapon. Box Breathing is really good. It's like 30-33% increase in damage huge but it's um it's not continuous damage now you saw me that i've been using tranchler I, I have for a bit i love my arc tranchler it's the, the same frame it's the very similar to this hasn't got vice stinger though um but it's the same gun model uh and i love box breathing but you've got to recognize um that you're going to shoot less ammo overall on champs and stuff. And sometimes it's better when you just solo in a champ or something just to fire four or five shots back to back as opposed to two. You will, loot, you will, loot, uh, you will um, use far less ammo. Like your ammo will go further with Box Braven. But I do think some of the other perks that we have available is, is a little bit better. Box Braven too situational is what I'm saying. It's good in some things. Like you say, I, I love Tarantula and stuff, but... It's a bit too situational for me, so that's why I didn't go with that. Focus Fury is a 20% damage bonus and procs when you fight when you basically deal damage for half your magazine, right? Size. So Focus Fury is very good, and it's a toss-up between that and Frenzy, what you would choose solo-wise. The thing is about Frenzy is that it's gonna proc automatic. There's nothing that you need to do, and you're gonna get a 15% damage bonus automatically. So I think Frenzy's the better choice for this linear as opposed to focus fury um but if you were really struggling in some encounter where your damage means that much more which generally it doesn't solo wise um because you're not under any time constraints so to speak so it's kind of like i think frenzy is frenzy is the way to go with this but i i think you could either go focus fury or frenzy uh for the solo uh, option for this now, I went with Enhanced Frenzy, so what does that do? Well, it just means that uh, it lasts for um, a longer time when it should go away. Frenzy will go away when you're out of battle. So I believe I read on Reddit it's 50% increase on that stat for Frenzy in terms of it lasts that little bit longer. So that's useful and maybe not so useful. 
you know, but again, I, I went with the enhanced frenzy thing because I get the gold border. So again, if you want to go maybe enhanced triple tap with standard frenzy, I wouldn't argue with, with you that way either. It depends on how many resonant elements you've got. Now, I've got a fault full of red borders, so I need to start investing some mats in the weapons. That's why I really do need to be honest. So it's a case of your situation. Look at it. Are you scra Are you really scrapping for the uh, resonant elements? If, if, if so, just get a standard triple tap, standard frenzy. You're good. You're golden. It's an amazing weapon. Whereas if you're like me, sort of like getting fed up with your vault being so full, then maybe invest the time, get the gold border on the weapon, because as I say, it's a weapon you're going to see being used quite a bit. So another reason as well, now I never crafted Fire Online on this right away, is because I've got Reed's Regret, right? So this is to players who haven't got it. Now, this is an old one without Vice Stinger, but this one is, is a newer one with Vice Stinger. But yeah, I probably will just craft one with Fire Online because you can get the enhanced perks, whereas Reed's Regret, you can't. So, on about the Vice Stinger, the origin perk, right? So, this procs, or has a chance to proc, for every shot that you do. That's why it's beneficial to have a bigger magazine, right? Plus, you're going to get triple tap to proc, so there's even less chance of you reloading, right? Now, you can get lucky with Vice Stinger procking three times back to back. It, it really can be the point where you're not reloading, which is hence why I went with the charge sign masterwork, to experiment with it. So, yeah, it just depends. You might not get it to proc as well like all the time it, it, like over the course of a magazine size i find that you at least get it to proc once right minimum and then up to three four times sometimes again it depends but i've got some footage of that coming up right so anyways that's that covered right but i just wanted to do a little comparison on the last wish boss uh, last wish boss shirochi just uh just to sort of showcase sort of the the fusion right the linear fusion damage it does and just compare it to a totally different linear which is cataclysmic right with four times the charm bait and switch which is i believe to be the best linear fusion in the game i said that a couple of months ago some people disagreed with me but look at king's fall how many people were using cataclysmic in king's fall day one contest mode if you had a cataclysmic i'm sure you were using it and if you didn't have one you were using this taipan if you if you crafted it in time so yeah, how does it how does it sort of compare to that? But what you need to understand before you see the footage is that bait and switch is better. The longer the damage phase is, the better it just goes up. If you've got a damage phase 30, 40, 50 seconds, bait and switch is going to outclass everything in the game on linear fusion uh, rifles. But the shorter the damage phase, things are more tightened. If you've only got a 10 to 20 second DPS window, then things like Frenzy can actually like beat out the bait and switch like especially with a vice stinger taipan roll right so you're going to see that coming up now the footage as well both weapons are boss specking i didn't run any um reloader mods i know i've got poor armor on it's just because i'm using all my highest light armor that's all that is i didn't use any linear fusion rifle mods all i use is boss specking both weapons just to compare the two and you, you'll see that coming up but anyways that's what i believe that you can craft on this linear for um, for solo purpose, okay? This is going to be a quick test of comparison between the four times the charm cataclysmic with versus the taipan, right? With the vice stinger and the the triple tap with the uh, frenzy. So obviously, as I said, uh, I do believe cataclysmic to probably be the best overall linear in the game. But I just want you to see how they both compare because when the damage window is shorter, bait and switch just isn't as good as it is, as it is when the damage window is longer now i end up eating here 15 shots of bait and switch uh, of uh cataclysmic should i say within a 25 second damage window on shiro chi right which we end up getting 522 k obviously we're using divinity as a as a debuff for the um for the crits as well just it just simulates the crits easier it simulates fourth times the charm and all that stuff um but we use boss spec no loaders right Boss back on both linears. Now we go with the Taipan. Now just look at this. Vice Stinger just keeps proccing back to back. Check on the left hand side. We haven't even got Frenzy yet. Right? Which are done on purpose. So we shot 12 shots uncharged Frenzy. And then 11 shots charged Frenzy. Which you, you see that the higher damage that I'm doing now. Right? So like I said on these short damage windows on bosses and stuff. Taipan's a really good thing. 
um, to use. So we got, what, 522k on the Cataclysmic? On this, we nearly got 600k, which is quite a bit higher. And like I said, I didn't even have Frenzy proc for the entire, for all the shots. So yeah, that was just a, a little clip of that, uh, showing you what you craft on this linear.